Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to use the Poisson function in Microsoft Excel. The Poisson function gives us the probability that a certain event will occur a specified number of times during a time interval. This can be a very useful function in counseling research, particularly when trying to allocate resources for research, as in the example I have here. So let's say that you're at a, an agency and you're conducting research and you have research assistants that are available to help conduct the research, but there is a limit to the number of participants that each research assistant can help in a, let's say, one hour time period. And we happen to know, uh, say from some previous study, that for this particular agency, the mean number of participants that will come to the agency in an hour is 10. So with this information, we can calculate the probability of a specific number of participants coming in during an hour, a range of participants, the probability that will have fewer than a specified number of participants, or the probability will have a greater number of participants than a specified value. So there are two important assumptions that we cannot violate in order to use the Poisson function. The first is that the probability of an event within a certain interval does not change over different intervals. So using this example I have here, let's say that the agency was open from 9 o'clock in the morning uh, until 8 o'clock at night. If several potential participants arrived before the agency opened, and therefore the hour from 9 to 10 had an increased number of participants uh, each day, that would violate that assumption. The probability of an event cannot change over different time intervals. The second assumption is that the probability of an event in one interval is independent of the probability of an event in any other non-overlapping interval. So using this example I have here, let's say that there's uh, an area uh, in the building where this particular agency is located where potential participants can wait. And if they enter into the agency, it's likely that they'll become a participant. Uh, and of course, if they leave, they wouldn't. So if one participant enters, and another or a potential participant enters, and another potential participant sees that and enters because that person entered, that probability is no longer independent because the second individual was influenced by the first individual going in to be a potential participant in the study. So it's important that we don't violate those two assumptions as we work forward here with our calculations and our interpretations of the results. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to calculate the probability that a specified number of participants will enter into the study in an hour. So you can see here I have equals to x and the probability. So the probability that zero participants will enter into the study in one hour is 0.005%. So it's, very, it's a very low probability event that you'll have zero participants. So I'll show you how I calculated that. So the function is Poisson.dist. Poisson distribution. 
And the first argument that Excel is looking for for this function is x, which would be the number of participants. Then the next argument is the mean, which of course is 10. I'm going to click F4 after I select 10 to make that an absolute reference. It puts the dollar signs in. That way when we autofill, uh, the E3 will stay constant. It will always refer to that cell. Uh, that has the mean in it. And then we have a choice between true and false. Uh, for it to, to calculate the probability of an exact number, we're going to want false. And you can see it's the same value as over here. And to extend this down uh, beyond the zero, you just autofill. You can see it produces the same values. So I want to note here that obviously the lowest value we can have is zero. Uh, we can't have negative uh, participants. But technically speaking, there is no top end. Uh, there, the distribution continues. Uh, but functionally speaking, there is. I mean, if our average number of participants per hour is 10, and you can see I've extended this out to 20, to get exactly 20, it's less than a fifth of a percent chance that's going to occur. And if I extend this even further, you will get a value. You can see it's, it decreases fairly dramatically. So when making these type of calculations and setting up these tables, there is a functional uh, upper end limit. So now let's calculate a range. So at this, this table over here, the green, what this tells us is the probability that the value will fall uh, between 0 and x, but including x. So greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to x. So if I select, say, the value 5, there's a 6.7% chance that you will have between 0 and 5 participants arrive in one hour. This is calculated in a similar way uh, to my first example. Poisson distribution, x, then the mean, except here for the last argument we're going to select true instead of false. And that will give us the value and, of course, auto-filling if you want to extend the values down. So then we have greater than x. So what if we want to know the probability that we'll have more than a certain number of participants during one hour? This value is equal to 1 minus this value. So what we would do is simply enter 1 minus Poisson distribution, select x, select the mean, and then again we're going to use true. And that's how we arrive at this value. And again, autofilling will extend the function down as far as you want. So as you can see, this makes sense. If you look here at the uh, between 0 and the specified value, to have between 0 and 10, there's a 58% chance, a little greater than 58% chance. So we know for it to be greater than 10, it's going to be around 41. And you can see it is, 41.6. So a few important points uh, regarding these tables. Say that you wanted to find the, chance, the chances of less than a certain value, as opposed to less than or equal to. Using this middle table, say let's use the example of 12. Right, so we want to know what, what the 
probability that will have less than 12. So less than 12 would mean 0 through 11. So the percentage we would use here would be the 69.67. Another point I want to make is that with the first table, you can really make all these other calculations fairly quickly. If you build out the table, so let's say that we, we know uh, from 0 to 8, we know that's 33.282%. We could also go to this first table and select all the percentages from 0 to 8. And it's a little hard to read, but down here, uh, the sum is listed, and it's 33.282%. It's the same. You can also calculate using this table a range that does not include zero. For example, say we want to know what the probability that we'll have between 5 and 15 participants. We would simply highlight all the probabilities associated with those exact numbers, and it would be around 92%, as you can see down here. So let me give you an example of how this could help us allocate resources. Let's say that for this particular study, one research assistant can help five participants in an hour. That's the maximum. So now we want to know how many research assistants to allocate per hour. So let's say that we are willing to have a 5% chance. We can tolerate a 5% chance that we will not have enough research assistants to handle the participants that are coming in. So you're going to have to decide what probability that you're willing to tolerate. So if we look here at the greater than x table, and we look for a value of less than 5%, the first one that appears is 4.8, and that would be greater than 15, which actually works out fairly well. If you have three research assistants, they could handle 15, the chances that you'll have greater than 15, it's only 4.8%. So that's within the risk tolerance that we have. And as you can see, as we move down, if you want to have four research assistants, they could handle 20 participants in one hour. And the chances that you'd have greater than 20 participants is roughly 0.16%, a very low probability. This type of function can also be used uh, in this example to determine when something might be amiss in terms of the number of participants that are coming in as compared to the number we would expect. So say that uh, an entire day goes by and we still have this mean of 10, of course, so we, we would know this from uh, historical data. And for each hour in this entire day, we never had more than five participants. And you can see for any one hour, the zero through five, it's only a 6.7% chance. And that's just for one hour. So you would reason that there's some other factor uh, in existence that's reducing number of participants that are coming in to the agency. So in counseling research, there are actually many ways we can use this function, including the two examples I provided here of resource allocation and spotting potential anomalies. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.